Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and today we're going to take a quick look at what comes in the April Simon Says Stamp kit before we jump into making the five cards. So let me just open up the box here and there you can see there's some glitter, I think it's glitter gel from S Stickles. I'll take a quick look here at what's in it. Just get the box out of the way because my cats like to play in it while I do this. Pull out all the items. Get them out of the bag. There we go. Okay. All right. So I guess since these were first, we'll take a look at these. Uh, so it is two jars of Stickles Glitter Gel in Galaxy and Venus. These are going to be stunning. I've never actually used Stickles like this. So this will be really interesting to play with. And then, of course, we have a Saltwater Taffy Distress Oxide ink pad, which is great. And then some cool balloon dies. There's three of them, which I think is super neat. I love birthday cards, so this kit is right up my alley. I believe this is Yupo paper. So I think these are two pieces of Yupo. Uh, I saw people cutting the uh, dies in them and using them as stencils, which you can, of course, do with Yupo since it's plastic. So that's really neat. And then there's the five off coupon, which was the same as the last kit, if anybody wants to use it. And then we have, this is one of the most exciting things for me. I love the embossing folders. So we have the Dimensional Stars embossing folder, which I'm really excited to play with. I love their embossing folders. And then we have the candy, of course, which I think is orange. Yep, orange today. And then we have the pattern paper. I think it's one-sided, yeah, it is. So you don't actually have to choose which piece you wanna use. There's some really interesting, bold patterns in here, which kind of makes me think retro, which is really interesting. So we'll have to see how I can kind of incorporate these pattern papers into some stuff. I'll try really hard not to just want to use the paste and the ink. You know, guys, you guys know how much I struggle with uh, using the pattern papers, but we'll definitely try. So there's those. And then, of course, the stamp set. So it is a six by eight stamp set called Life is the Party. It's really cool. It's got a lot of really great big sentiments, which are great for birthday cards, which I'm pretty excited about. And then we have the cardstock and, of course, the idea sheet. And our cardstock, I believe, is just one sheet of uh, Nina Solar White and 110 pound. I think it's just for some card bases because they have some really great other products in this kit. So that's pretty neat. So that is everything that's in the kit. Let's jump into making some cards. All right, so let's jump straight into the first card. So I really want to focus on saltwater taffy. I think it's a gorgeous distress oxide color. And I wanted to use the embossing folder because you guys know that I love embossing folders. So this first card, I used a brayer just to kind of get the saltwater taffy on the embossing folder. Now you could wipe the pad across it. This is just kind of gives you a little bit more of a um, smooth color across the panel. And I am going to make an A2 size card with this. So I ran that through my Big Shot, which I don't have on screen because it doesn't really fit. Uh, and I just got my panel to look really pretty with that color. And then with the excess that I had left on the brayer, I just put it inside of the card base. Now you're gonna see me have to do this again later because I thought that that would be the right side and then I end up flipping the base. So it ends up being on the front part of the card, which is generally not where you write, but will get there and then for a mat because if you've been with me for a hot minute you know i love to add mats to all of my cards so i brought in a piece of the tim holtz uh, metallic color craft stock this is the new one that has all those colors in the i think it's six by nine size and i just used the bright pink one for that and i'm also going to use that little piece that i cut off of the uh, star panel i'm going to use that to stamp out my sentiment which just says sending hugs and kisses uh, which which I stamped out with Versamark Onyx Black Ink. Versafine, sorry, Versafine Onyx Black Ink. And then I really wanted to add the balloons on there. You kind of saw my layout there a second ago. And I'm going to cut them out of that the center of that pink panel. I cut them out three times with all of the three balloons. I'm only going to use the largest balloon on this card specifically, but I saved them just in case I wanted to use them on a different card. I'm not going to use them on a card in this set, but I will because they're beautiful and that color is stunning. But I decided to do the other two balloons in uh, vellum and a one in white. There's no real rhyme to this other than that's kind of the color scheme that I have going on and vellum is just I love vellum I think it's one of the coolest papers or cardstocks or however you want to call it uh, ever made so I have a tendency to use it for all the things but 
I just thought that this kind of added some interest to those balloons. Uh, so I did cut them each out of a different color, kind of sticking to the color scheme that we have going on. And then I'm going to jump between my distress uh, distress, <laughs> my deluxe nouveau glue and, and, uh, my barely art glue. And there's no rhyme or reason for this. It's just preference and the tip really. Uh, and then I did splash on some perfect pearls that I just keep mixed up in a little mini mister bottle on my desk, uh, because added texture and shine really, that's the only reason it doesn't need it on this card necessarily. However, if, uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love all the shiny things. So I do have a tendency towards, uh, extra bling an extra shine so I do like to add that to panels that have uh, a little bit added texture in the background so I'm going to lay everything down flat for this I'm going to pop up the sentiment and now I was hoping that the glue wouldn't kind of be as obvious as it ends up being on the vellum balloon however <clears throat> excuse me I am going to hide it with the sentiment now I know the sentiment's quite small, uh, so that doesn't really give you a lot of space to hide it, but I think that it distracts the eye enough that it's not blatantly obvious that that glue is sitting there and that it's uh, kind of reflecting all of off of the metallic cardstock underneath it. And I did also layer the sentiment with another piece of that pink craft stock uh, just to tie the colors all together. Now, I love pink. Um, pink is my jam. I, I'm I'm a big fan of all the vibrant colors, but pink especially. So this was right up my alley with all of the, the pink colors in this kit. So bear with me. There are a fair amount of cards that that reflect a fair amount of pink. Now, of course, you could use any color combination for this. I chose the pink simply because they came with saltwater taffy, so I kind of am going to embrace that, but uh, you could use different color combos for this. And now I drew little str strings down from my balloons with a Copic marker, and I ended up hating it. So, so that's okay. I'm just going to cover them up with a piece of white string, so that ties them all together. So you can see that I just kind of used my Barely Art glue and that super fine tip and just ran it along where I had the line. And this is some white and silver baker's twine. I just pulled the silver strand out uh, and used the white strand by itself so that I could kind of just cover up that pink line that you see. And now you can't even tell it's really there. So, I mean, I, you could absolutely tie a bow and that would kind of even add a little more extra. I didn't, but you could. Uh, and then here you can see that I've flipped my card panel when I adhered everything down. So the part that I thought was going to be where I would have written is actually on the wrong side. But that's okay. I'm going to fix that. Uh, I think it's pretty easy to fix, actually. So uh, I'm not too concerned about it. And then I did add some pink fresh essential gems. These are the pink ones that come in that big set. I love that set. I'm going to use it several times throughout these cards just because they're beautiful. But here I'm going to fix that uh, card so that it has a little bit of that uh, saltwater taffy on both sides. Uh, so I just brought my brayer back in and just kind of painted some on the other side. Now it just has a little on both sides, which I think turned out really pretty cool. I need to do some more stuff with my brayer. It does some really neat techniques and I usually forget about it, to be honest. So I'll have to uh, bring in some extra brayer techniques here pretty soon. I actually should do uh, a few different techniques that I've been kind of going around in my head. But that is the first card. You're going to get a look closer to it here so you can kind of see it in all its glory and all of its pink shininess. And then we're going to jump into card two, which is a mini slimline card. So I like my mini slimlines to be six by six inches scored at the three inch mark. And I am going to give it a black matte. This is just the black shimmer card stock that I like to use pretty much all the time. It just adds a little bit of extra to a mat. Uh, and I generally, I do an eighth of an inch smaller. That's kind of my typical size when I'm creating a mat. I like a subtle mat. Uh, you can, of course, make it bigger or smaller, whatever you choose to do. Uh, I just aim for about an eighth of an inch. And this is some hammer mill cardstock that I'm going to use here. I do kind of wish I had used a a heavier cardstock for this, um, maybe like a distress watercolor or something like that, just so that it had a bit more mm, heft for the moisture that it's going to end up with. It turns out fine in the end, but while I was waiting for it to dry, I was a little concerned. So here you can see that I just scored my base at the three inch mark, making it a six by three inch card base. And then I'm going to bring in those two uh, glitters that came in the kit. The, um, I don't remember what they're called now. Uh, this was recorded way after I did the unboxing. Uh, so I kind of forgot what they're called, but 
I'm going to use those on this through a stencil from Simon Says Stamp. This is the Balloon Bunches stencil. And everything I used will be linked and listed down below in case you're curious about any specific item. Uh, or you can leave me a comment and ask. I will happily answer. And I do have a Nouveau spatula here. I thought that that would be a little easier to kind of smooth this out because the texture of this is very gel-esque. It's not quite... It, it's really interesting. Um... I don't quite know how to explain the texture of it, but it's nothing like um, like other gels or other glitter mousses or anything like that that I've used before. So it was a bit interesting to get it to spread. And because it has huge chunks of glitter in it, it didn't really want to spread as much as I'd hoped. So this is where I kind of wish I had used a uh, bit of a thicker cardstock, something that could have taken more moisture than what I ended up using. But it works okay in the end. And I am going to put some uh, press and seal into my little jars just to keep them contained and keep the moisture or the air out so that they stay moist longer so that I can get more use out of them. And then I am going to do a sentiment here. So the color on this sentiment is not great for this card necessarily, but it works really wet for really well for the set of cards that I'm doing. So I'm going to stamp out the word today and the sentiment, it's going to be a good day. So my my sentiment will read today is going to be a good day uh, or is gonna be a good day and I'm going to heat emboss them with uh, ink on threes strawberry champagne embossing powder now this is a dead ringer for saltwater taffy uh, it, it almost matches really really well and you'll see that when we jump into my fourth card um, and here you can see today didn't stamp quite well I'm going to heat emboss it just because it's there but I'm going to stamp it again so uh, this was just to save time because I was too lazy to do it. Uh, and I'm doing all of this while my panel is drying. I do also actually make the third card while that panel is drying. And then I jump back to finishing it later. It's all going to be together in the video, so it makes sense. But be aware that I did actually leave that panel with that glitter on it for quite a while. I think I walked away. I made some tea. Like I came back. Like I gave it a good chunk of time to dry. So You'll see when we I show it to you here in a second how curved it is, and I was a bit concerned, but it did work out. And then I'm just going to fussy cut around the word today. You saw me use my trimmer to just cut down the uh, sub-sentiment is going to be a good day, and then I just fussy cut around this. There's probably a matching die set for this stamp set now, but of course it doesn't come in the kit, and I don't mind fussy cutting around things, so I just did that. You could, of course, cut this into a square and leave it that way, or a rectangle for the size of this, but... I wanted it to not cover a ton of the background. And then I'm going to adhere my mat to my white base. And I'm going to adhere that little sub sentiment to the bottom of the Y on my sentiment as well. And this is actually where I stopped working on this card and made my third card because I was still waiting for that panel to dry. So I do kind of end up jumping around a little bit. Not in the video. I'm just telling you this because I know it looks like everything goes so easily and everything, you know, is, is really quite concise, but it isn't. Uh, half the time I jump around a bunch just because I'm waiting for something to dry or especially in these five cards, one kit videos, um, I end up kind of jumping around quite a bit. So here, this is now hours later. You can see on my watch there, it says 5 a.m. Uh, this is hours later since starting this card and this panel is fully dry at this point. So I'm using tons of my Nouveau glue in the back because you can see it's quite curved uh, and I'm going to adhere it straight down and then I'm going to weigh it down with my Misty just because that sits on my desk. Anything that's got a flat surface and is a bit has a bit of heft to it will work. Um, I just use the Misty because I find that the easiest and I left that to dry underneath it for a good another I don't know, five minutes or so just because I went to do something else for a little bit. And then I'm going to adhere my sentiment just right on the center of the card with some thin 3D foam squares to add a little dimension to the sentiment. And then, of course, I'm going to bring in some of those same pink, fresh, essential jewels. Uh, and I brought in the kind of tealy blue and the pale pink that I used on the first card. And this is, again, just because I love all the shiny things, not because this card necessarily needs more glitter. But you'll see here when I hold it up in a second how stunningly shining this card is. I'm actually looking at it as I talk to you and it, the camera doesn't even quite capture how stunningly shiny this is. So I'm going to have to play with those gels a bit more and see what else we can kind of do with them. Just because they're, they're pretty, but they're a really interesting texture. 
So I'll have to kind of give them another go. And then we're going to jump into the third card. Now, this one is going to be a shaker card, and it's fairly simple. I tried to kind of keep these cards a bit more simple than my usual, just because I tend to get a little excited about these five card ones kits, and then I'm making, you know, five cards, and I need to get them together kind of quickly so I can get the video together, and I end up, uh, like, overwhelming myself. So, these cards are a smidge more simple. So I did choose to just use the pattern paper to create this. I used that kind of confetti one and that really pretty rainbow one. And those are going to be the panels I use for this. And again, this is an A2 size card and I am going to create my own shaker pocket. So I have a piece of acetate that I've trimmed down to be just slightly bigger than my A2 or my panel. Uh, and I'm going to use some, I believe it's quarter of an inch score tape just because it's super, super strong and I don't want the glitter shaker bits to fall out. And I like to adhere one side at a time just because then I can overlap the edges, which gives me more security with none of my pieces trying to fall out. Uh, this is the easiest way I've found to make these. So this is kind of how I've started doing them. I've changed my way a little bit uh, a few times in this, but this is kind of now the easiest way I've found. So I like to do all the sides with tape and I'm going to lose the uh, camera here in a second. I don't quite know what happened. It just stopped recording, but all I did was add a layer of the tape at the top part there, which is where I'm going to put in my little bits uh, into the shaker pocket. And my shaker pocket is going to have some Distress Rock Candy glitter, some mica flakes, and these are the old mica flakes with the kind of uh, vintage vibe to them, and some, I believe it's Once Upon a Time, uh, sequin mix from Little Things from Loose Cards. I don't believe you can actually get this one anymore. I've had it for a long time, but I thought that it really went well with those confetti pieces in that pattern paper. Uh, so you can't get that one. I'll link a different one down below if you're interested that's similar to this one, but I don't believe you can buy this exact one anymore. Um, and I does also have some little gems in it, but I actually pulled those out. I didn't show you that because it's just me with the spoon inside of the pocket pulling them out. But I pulled them out because once I seal up the pocket, it's too low. Like it doesn't have enough shake for the gem pieces in there. So they kind of just get stuck. So I pulled them out and I'm just going to adhere them to the front of the card for some extra shimmer and shine because why not? And then there you just saw I adhered the last side and I trimmed off the little bit of weird extra plastic that kind of sticks up on the corners. And now it's time to create a sentiment. So I cut a little square out of the uh, matte piece here, which is what you see here. And it's just a stitched uh, square die from Simon's Stamp and I ran that through my Gemini with my junior plates uh, and I generally use a magic mat this one specifically is a um, magic well it's my version of a magic mat I made it myself I just cut a self-healing mat in half and I use it in my Gemini because it it works but uh, I do also have a magic mat I just I need to heat it up so that it uh, it lays flat again but I just cut that out so that could go on the front. And then I'm going to stamp out the sentiment time to party on it. This measured out perfectly. And I thought that this would just be kind of fun to have that pattern kind of repeated in the front of the card as well as the matte piece. And I just thought that was kind of fun. So I'm going to put some Big Mama foam tape on the back of my shaker panel. I find that this just added a little dimension and it makes sure that that plastic isn't going anywhere. And the Big Mama foam tape is, is a little bit forgiving because you see there I laid it down and it wasn't straight. I was able to pick it up because I hadn't really pushed it down yet. So Big Mama foam tape, I know makes it sound thick, but it's actually very, very thin. It's just that the roll is huge. And it's by far, I, for me as a, a Canadian, vastly cheaper to buy the Big Mama foam tape from Simon than it is to buy the Scotch 3M foam tape for me in Canada. So if you're Canadian and you're looking for a nice foam tape, this one is awesome. Even with exchange and shipping, it's cheaper for me to get it than uh, the 3M foam tape. And I added some extra pieces just behind that little sentiment. Again, just for a little dimension and very, very thin amount of dimension. It's even actually thinner than the 3M foam tape as well. So if you like a small amount of dimension but still want some, this is probably the best foam tape in my opinion, of course. And then I am going to adhere just those little gems that I pulled out of the shaker mix to the front of the plastic with some barely art glue. This again is just because they were already in the shaker. I just pulled them out and figured why not having a little bit on the outside. They're super subtle. Uh, so it just kind of adds to the aesthetic of the card and I think it looks really pretty and then here I'm going to hold it up so you can kind of see the shaker in all of its glory it's really pretty 
I can even shake it for you there. I just, I love shaker cards. I think that they're some of the most fun cards to make because they're interactive, but they're not difficult. So I do have a tendency towards them. So I am now going to show you that one up close and then we're going to jump into card four. So card four, once again, is a mini slimline card. That is kind of my preferred size for different things. I, I do tend to make them quite a bit. And it's going to be a very simple one. We're just going to do some oxide ink blending. And I'm going to, again, make it my six by six cut down to the, th sorry, six by six scored at the three inch mark, making it a six by three inch uh, scored base. And then I am also going to cut down a piece of hammer mill and a piece of my black shimmer again to that one eighth of an inch smaller. This is again, just my preference. And the hammer mill is beautiful because you can Copic color on it. You can uh, ink blend on it. You can use it for a lot of things. You can use it for that, uh, that gel stuff I put on there. Although I kind of wish I'd use something slightly thicker, but that's okay. It worked out in the end, but it's very, very smooth. So it works really well for like Copic coloring and oxide ink blending, which is what we're about to do. So for my three colors, I chose, I believe I have, well, I know I have, um, what do I have? Tattered Rose, uh, Kitsch Flamingo, and Saltwater Taffy is the three colors that I chose to use. And I'm going to put the Saltwater Taffy in the center. So I'm going to go Tattered Rose into Saltwater Taffy into Kitsch Flamingo. I think that it just does a beautiful, subtle change in the pinks. Uh, I think that it's stunning. I'm going to have to try this again on a couple of different cards just because I really enjoyed the blend. But I wanted something that kind of shifted color but was subtle. Um, I kind of just, I wanted something pretty. And I love pink, so this was the color combo I kind of came up with. And I think that it turned out really pretty. And then you're going to see here when we jump into the sentiment in a second how much that strawberry champagne uh, embossing powder really matches the saltwater taffy ink color. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I'm going to splash on some perfect pearls. Again, this is just for added texture and shine in the background. And it, it just gives it a little something extra. By no means do you need it. It just adds a little something extra and I, I love it. And then I brought in the stamp from the stamp set that's just like kind of the confetti pieces and the saltwater taffy and I'm just going to stamp that all over the background creating a little more texture. You can see it a little better on the um, bottom there. The I think, Vic, what did I use? Victorian, I don't even remember what color I used now. It's late guys, I'm going to be honest. It's like 5.30 in the morning. But it's late for me because I work nights. <laughs> so <laughs> it's early for everybody else. It's late for me. Uh, and I just stamped that all across the panel so that it had some extra texture in the background. And then I am going to heat emboss the Let's Celebrate sentiment on a piece of vellum. And with that same strawberry champagne embossing powder, which I think is a dead ringer for the saltwater taffy. And you're going to see it here because I'm going to put them together. And it just like they match almost perfectly. If I had owned the embossing glaze, color for saltwater taffy I probably would have used that but I don't own it so I'm kind of just working with the stuff that I actually have in my stash so I am also going to fussy cut this out again with my mini scissors my mini uh, snips uh, I don't own again like I don't own the um in the embossing folder I don't own the dye matching dyes I'm pretty much positive there is a matching die set but I don't own them so I just fussy cut around it with no problems and I am going to adhere it flat onto the card panel just kind of above the saltwater taffy color so you're going to see how easily those two match together which I think is really neat it'd be interesting to see when and if I get the uh, saltwater taffy distress glaze what it ends up looking like comparatively uh, I am slowly collecting some of the glazes. I have a couple of the colors, mostly the bright ones, because again, that's kind of my thing. But there you can see how well it matches that. And I wanted it to be super subtle. Like this card really is just very, I don't know if feminine is the right word, but maybe that's the right word. It just is very subtle and very pretty. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> and I'm going to adhere the layers down with my Nouveau Deluxe glue. I'm just, this bottle's almost empty. So you can see me kind of smacking it against my glass mat. That's why I'm trying to use it up. It's very close to being empty. So I can replace it here soon, but I do jump between the Nouveau Deluxe glue and the Barely Art glue, depending on what I want for a tip. Uh, but they're by far my favorite too. And then here I'm going to use the Barely Art glue just to go along the lines of where I've heat embossed the sentiment. This is honestly just to have no glue fall, kind of like smush out past the letter. So it's a very thin line uh, along the letters. And then I just am going to adhere it to the center of the card. And none of the glue squished out, so it worked out really well. 
And here you'll kind of see when I hold it up, you'll see how easily it is to read the sentiment. But here, I mean, you can barely see it. You can see it, of course, when you're actually looking at the card, but it is kind of difficult to see it when it's laying down there. Uh, and I did use two of the colors of pink from that Pink Fresh Jewel set. It comes with like 12 different colors, I believe. Uh, it's by far one of my favorite sets. If you guys have been with me for a minute, you know I've used it on several different cards, so... Here, I'm going to hold it up so you can see this card in all of its glory. You can see how well, like you can easily see that sentiment. It's just the camera doesn't quite pick it up well once it's laying on the desk. But you can see that shimmer in the background and that kind of cool confetti going up past the card in the background. I just think that it turned out really pretty. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> I guess that's all that matters. And I'm always a sucker for oxide ink blending. That's probably one of my favorite uh, techniques ever. So, and then we're going to jump into the last card. So for the last card, I really wanted to create an ATC, uh, which is an artist trading card. The only rule to ATCs is they have to be two and a half by three and a half inches, which this is. This is a piece of Distress watercolor card stock. And I'm just going to use that little balloon stamp that came out of the uh, stamp set to stamp it down on the background. And I have three colors here. I have uh, Victorian Velvet, Dried Marigold, and um, the Saltwater Taffy as I thought these three colors would look really pretty together. Now, in the end, you can't really tell that there are balloons in the background, but you and I know, so it's okay. Uh, I end up covering them up with uh, some really pretty glitter, and you can't almost tell that they're balloons. I mean, they could just be some cool dots, really, but uh, I know they're balloons, so, you know, that's good enough for me. And I just stamped them across the panel. I switched between colors. You just see I have a baby wipe there from Costco. I love their baby wipes and I, uh, I just kind of wipe off my balloon after stamping out one or two or three depending on what layer of colors I'm on and I overlap them and I stamp them in the different colors and I do wipe the stamp off on my hand before stamping it back in the ink. This is just because it's wet from the baby wipe and I don't want it to oxidize right away. So if I can wipe the moisture off in my hand, uh, then I don't have that concern. So that's the only, that's the reason I'm wiping it on my hand. And then once I'm finished, you can see that I've used all of the colors, covered up most of the background. And then I brought in the same Simon Says Stamp Balloon Bunch stencil. And I'm going to use some Nouveau Moon sh Moonstone Glimmer Paste and put it all across the top of this. Uh, I chose that because it is uh, iridescent and like clear translucent I guess uh, and I just kind of went across the whole thing with my palette knife and just kind of tried to make it as thin as I could so that it would dry quickly although again this is a heavier cardstock so I didn't have any problems with warpage with this and it dried perfectly but I mean at this point you can't really tell they're balloons I mean I can see that the stencil is balloons and I can tell that the balloons are behind it because I did that but I mean I think that anybody who received this wouldn't really be able to tell that that's what they are uh, but I like to make these kind of things for like pen pals or I trade with people or uh, artist trading cards are just a lot of fun and I really enjoy making them so usually in a kit I tend to throw one in uh, just for something fun to do that's a bit different than a card that uh, can be really simple I mean this could easily be made into a card front if you wanted to instead and I did bring in that same uh, strawberry champagne embossing powder and I'm going to heat set that and this one says it's your birthday exclamation mark which is pretty exciting I thought that was pretty cute so this would be super easy to throw in a pen pal letter and send to one of my several pen pals uh, so yeah I just I like to make things like this because uh, I think that, that it's really fun to receive different things in your letters uh, so yeah I just trimmed that down to be a very small little label and then I'm going to put a couple of thin 3d foam squares on the back this dried vastly faster than those gels did earlier um I don't know if it's just a consistency thing or um, maybe I got a thinner application. I'm not totally sure why this one went way better, but it it dried vastly faster. So I'm going to hold it up here so you can see it in all of its shimmering, shining glory. I love how this turned out. I'd love to know if you guys had a favorite out of these five cards. If you do, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. If you leave me a like, leave me a comment and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do new videos every Monday and Thursday and I think I have some exciting things coming. Thank you so much guys and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.